Addison, why didn't you clean the house this morning? It was a total mess when I got home. You're so lazy. And seriously, being pregnant at 17? You've got to help out more. What's the point of supporting you if you can't pitch in? Sorry, Mom. I couldn't do it this morning. Morning sickness hit me hard. I couldn't get anything done. I promise I'll make it up after work. Morning sickness? Again? You always pull out the pregnancy card when you don't want to work. I know you too well. Mom, it's not an excuse. I was really sick, throwing up and feeling dizzy. I tried to start with the kitchen, but I had to keep running to the bathroom. You're making a big deal out of morning sickness. It's not that bad, okay? Mom, why don't you believe me? I've been pregnant twice and I know morning sickness. I just don't buy it. I'm telling the truth, Mom. I'm not trying to dodge responsibilities. I've been doing chores every day since I dropped out of school. Today was just too tough with the morning sickness. Enough. We made a deal when I found out you were pregnant. You do what I say or you move out. That's it. Please, don't kick me out, Mom. I'll try harder. I won't make this mistake again. You better not. Now, get back to work, Addison. You can't afford to lose your part-time job, especially while saving for the baby. I'm doing my best, Mom. Good. If you're reasonable about all of this, we won't argue. Oh, I almost forgot. Your sister's coming home. So I want you to clean her room after your shift at the retail store today. Why do I have to clean her room? She's a college student, not a kid. She should help me. Beverly won't be doing housework. She's a college student with a promising future as a lawyer. While you're a teen mom who dropped out of school, your futures aren't the same. So I'm the family servant doing all the housework while Beverly gets a break? Seriously? Well, she's been working hard at college and I don't want her to worry about chores. That doesn't seem fair, mom. I'm 17 and pregnant. Well, Beverly is healthy and free. You can't make me serve her just because she's in college. Quit complaining, Addison. Remember our deal? You have to do whatever Beverly says when she's home. Fine. I don't have a choice. I'm the one who needs support the most, but I'll be the one serving my family. I see my future clearly now. Don't be so dramatic, Addison. You're going to be a mom soon, and this is how I'm preparing you for your future. So, should I thank you in advance for that? I'm glad you understand. Now, I've got to go. Get back to work, and don't forget to clean Beverly's room. Got it, Mom. Hey, I'm on my way home. Have you cleaned my room yet? I'm still working on it. Your room is a real disaster. Ugh, just get it done and make sure my room and lunch are ready by the time I get back in an hour and a half. Hey, don't be all high and mighty here. You're still a student, not a lawyer. I get that mom favors you, but I won't let you boss me around. Oh, look, Miss Perfect is talking. You don't get to call the shots. Mom said you're supposed to help out in this house, and if I need anything, just call Addison. So, I'll stick with that and make sure you follow through. I'm not looking forward to putting up with your smug attitude for the next two weeks. <laughs> You'll get used to it, I'm sure. Addison, if I were Mom, I wouldn't have let you stay at home either. It's tough having a single teen mom in the family. But what's more surprising is that you decided to keep the baby. That's a questionable choice. It wasn't a bad choice. Even though I'm only 17, the doctor said the baby is healthy and fine. Ugh, don't worry too much about your baby. What I'm saying is that you've made a decision that'll make your life harder. Imagine taking care of a baby until you're 34 with no degree. It limits your options in finding a job. But if you get rid of the baby now, you can be free. That's pretty heartless. 
My baby has a heartbeat. So what? It's not fully human yet. It's not a big deal. It's a huge deal. You're in college, but you sound really ignorant right now. <laughs> what? Take that back or I'll make these two weeks even tougher for you. Go ahead. I'm not afraid of you. Ha! <laughs> You'll regret this, girl. I'm not stupid. My school grades were better than yours. That doesn't prove anything, Addison. You let a guy get you pregnant and potentially derail your future. That's pretty dumb, both on your part and his. Didn't you know how to use protection? We did use protection. But contraceptives aren't always 100% effective. And just so you know, I plan to go back to school after giving birth and work my tail off. I'll be more successful than you, and you'll regret looking down on me today. No, that's an adorable dream you've got there. Well, let me tell you, your life is headed for a rough patch. A successful teen mom? Unlikely. I'm telling you, Beverly. Being a mom is an incredible thing. You have no idea how strong a mother can be when it comes to protecting her child. I'll do whatever it takes to give my baby a better life. No, <laughs> well, good for you. But I think I'll leave you in the dust. Now, get back to cleaning, and don't even think about touching anything in my room. I'll inspect everything when I get home. Mom, I'm at the hospital. I started having contractions at work, and a woman from the store helped me get to the hospital. I think I'm about to give birth in a few hours. I'm sure because today is my due date. I'm really scared, Mom. I tried calling you, but I couldn't reach you. Where are you? Please text me back when you can. You're being quite a bother, Addison. You should have known I wasn't picking up for a reason. We're on vacation with your dad and sister. We can't be there. Call the baby's father and let us enjoy our trip. What? Mom! I told you about my due date in advance. Why would you plan a vacation around that time? Did you intend to leave me alone when I'm giving birth to my baby? Why wouldn't I? I had this vacation planned well before you told me about your pregnancy. Don't blame me. You're lucky you shared your news before I booked your ticket, or else I'd be wasting money on a ticket you wouldn't use. Oh, I can't believe this. Mom! How could you do this to me? I'm your daughter. I've done everything I can to make you happy. Well, I guess it wasn't enough. Not enough? That's absurd. You asked me to quit school because you said it wasn't worth it while I was pregnant. So I did. You wanted me to find a job and support my baby because you were financially helping Beverly? So I did. You made me do all the housework, even when I was struggling with my morning sickness. And my doctor recommended more rest. All because you didn't want to use this person in your house? And I complied. No one in this family helped me. And you all thought I should serve you just because I wasn't going to school or college. But now, I see that I'm better off without you. Fine. Why didn't you realize this sooner? I couldn't stand having you around my house. I was wrong to trust you and follow your orders blindly. I thought if, if I did everything right, maybe you'd like me more. That's not going to happen. You've brought shame to this family. You got pregnant as a teenager, dropped out of school, and you have no future. Allowing you to stay in my house was a big favor. We're on our way to the airport, so... I can't talk right now. Wait, Mom. I'm begging you one last time to come back and be with me. Will you please? Stop with the nonsense. I'm not canceling my holiday for you. I told you to call his family. Quit bothering us, okay? Okay. I think this is the last time I'll be texting you. I won't intrude on your life anymore. Have a great trip, my dear family.
Oh my gosh. Addison, do you know how hard it is to get your new number? Who's that? It's your sister, Beverly. Oh, hi, Beverly. I'm kind of surprised to receive your message after such a long time. What's up? What's up? <laughs> this is the first thing you say to your sister after 16 years? I can't believe you, Addison. You used to be such a sweet kid, you know? Cut to the chase. I don't think you're here to flatter me. Tell me what you really want from me. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you for the money you sent us for Dad's funeral. I mean, wow. $5,000 all at once. When your best friend from high school handed us the money at Dad's funeral, both Mom and I were so surprised. We thought you'd disappeared for good and wouldn't show up again. And the money? I never thought you'd be able to give us five grand. Hold on. What are you talking about? Why would I feel ashamed of myself? Well, it's pretty obvious. You got pregnant at 17? I never felt ashamed of being a mom at 17, okay? Oh, come on. You don't have to deny it. I totally get it. After all, it's in the past. You were so young that you made a mistake. We should forget it and move on. Beverly, I remember you never liked me. You looked down on me. When I got pregnant at that age, you made fun of me and treated me like a servant. What made you change your attitude towards me? The money I sent for your father's funeral? Don't be so skeptical, sweetie. People change, you know. I've changed. No, you haven't. In the last 16 years, you never called me. Only when I sent that money did you find every way to get my number. You changed faster than expected, Beverly. Addison, it was your fault. You disappeared without saying goodbye to us. We tried to find you, but we couldn't. You're right. Only after you sent the money did I know who I could ask about you. It was your best friend from high school. Oh, please, Beverly. Don't waste your time and act like you were genuinely looking for me. I could tell that you were the happiest person when I disappeared. Oh, sweetie, how can I do that? I'm your sister. And you are, Beverly. You criticized and treated me terribly, even though you knew I was pregnant. Do you really think I've forgotten everything you did to me? You know what? It's been 16 years. Let's forget everything in the past and start fresh, okay? Now, I want to know more about you, sis. Where are you living? What are you doing? Why don't you ask me how much money I'm making? I think that's what you're most curious about. <laughs> Whatever. How much? More than the money you're earning with your small grocery store. A grocery store, huh? You always used to brag about your bright future as a successful lawyer. And now, you're running a store. That's unbelievable, Beverly. Shut up! I didn't want this either, but one thing led to another, so... But, Addison, how could that happen? How could you earn more money than me? Well, I'm running my own business, which is at least 20 times bigger than yours. No way! 20 times? That's ridiculous. Tell me the name or I won't believe you. Well... I don't want to. I've cut all ties with your family, so I have no reason to give you all the details. I answered your question. Whether you believe it or not is up to you. If what you're telling me is true, you might be making like seven figures a month. Well, sort of. But this is impossible! How can a teen mom like you make more than me? Huh. Just because I was a teen mom doesn't mean I couldn't make good money. Beverly, when will you stop looking down on teen mothers? But you didn't go to college. You dropped out of school. You're supposed to live a disastrous life, Addison. I worked so hard to achieve everything I have today. You don't know what's happened to me, Beverly. After I gave birth to my baby, I moved in with the father of my child. His family supported me better than my own. It was ironic. I got married to him and started running my own business. I faced a lot of setbacks, but thinking about my husband, my child, 
and how terrible my life used to be with your disrespect? I forced myself to keep trying. Finally, all my efforts paid off. I'm living the life I've always dreamed of. You were just lucky. You disappeared with all my luck. That's why I ended up like this. Addison, you have to make it up to me. What do you really want? I need $10,000 to upgrade my store. You've got to give me the money. So you're contacting me to ask for money, huh? Honestly, I could see this coming when I decided to send $5,000 to mom. But I have to admit that it still gets me frustrated. You can say whatever you want after sending me the money. Why should I? Because I'm your sister. I can't believe you dare to call yourself my sister and use that title to order me around again. I'm not as weak as I used to be, Beverly. No matter what, we still share the same blood. I'm your family. You have to listen to your older sister and do as I say. Come on, it's only $10,000. I'm not asking for a whole new store. Just give me the money and leave. I won't ask for anything else. My family? I don't need that kind of family. You know what? I'll give you $10,000 for our family's sake. But it comes with one condition. Really? What's that? I'll do everything to meet it. It's like how I gave my money to Dad. Once you're gone, I'll write you a check for $10,000 at your funeral. What do you say? LOL. You witch! How dare you tell me to die! That's my only condition. No! I don't accept that. Give me another one then. Then beg me. If you do it well, maybe I'll change my mind. Nonsense. I'll never beg anyone. I'd rather die than be looked down upon by you, you smug bastard. Oh, still being arrogant as usual, I see. Well, that was your last chance, Beverly. I guess we don't have anything more to talk about now. Goodbye, sis. Hey, Addison. It's your mom. Beverly told me about her conversation with you this morning. Is it true that you asked your sister to go to hell just for $10,000? Hi, Mom. Yes, that's right. She asked me to give her $10,000. That's not a small amount of money, so I got to have a condition. I'll send her that money only at her funeral. Shame on you. Is this how I taught you to treat your family, Addison? Like trash? Yes, actually. What? No, of course not. Your sister is going to scale up her small business, so I want you to help her out. I know you have more than enough money to do that. You're now making seven figures. Ten grand is just a drop in the bucket. But I don't want to, Mom. Did you forget what happened on the day I gave birth to my baby? Talking about the baby, you haven't even asked about your grandchild since you texted me. All you mentioned is money. You choose to run away with the baby, which means that I'm not related to it. Yeah, you're right. And neither are we. I don't want to be related to you anymore. No, that's not possible. That's different. I raised you for 17 years until you got pregnant and then ran away with that boy. I ran away because of you. I couldn't stand the way you all treated me. Like trash, like a servant. I was only 17 and pregnant. But I still had to work at the store and at home. I have literally no time to rest. Those days are the darkest days for me. Do you know that? And when I needed you the most of the day I gave birth, you went on vacation and left me alone. Is that the way we should treat our family members, Mom? I didn't ask you to get pregnant, okay? That was an accident. I don't care. You decided to keep the baby, so you had to take your own responsibility. All right. You're right. I think I have the right to say that you didn't support me then, so I don't need to support you now. At the very last moment, I still begged you for love, but you declined me harshly. Fine. I'll make it up to you. 
I'll give you love and you'll give me a monthly allowance in return, okay? I can't believe you, Mom. You're such a possessive mother. It's too late. I don't need that reluctant love. Actually, I have all the love I need with my family that I've built for myself at my side. My husband and my son. I spent years staying away from your toxic family. So there's no way I would let you get into my life again. But... But what? My condition is still valid. Are you cursing me to death? Well, I'm making a deal with you. As we used to when I told you about my pregnancy. Make a deal with me or not, it's up to you. You're such an ungrateful, insolent daughter. You can't treat your only mother like this. I'm telling you, Addison, you have to support us financially. Mom, I'm not 17 anymore. That weak, fragile Addison is so over. I'm a successful businesswoman now. If you look down on me like you used to, I can eliminate you from my life no matter where you are. All right, you won. I'll do whatever you want. Whatever I want? I think I just told you what I really wanted. Eliminate you and Beverly from my life. That's it. What? No. You can't abandon me. Of course I can. I've got to go, Mom. Once again, my condition is still valid. Call me when you make it. But if you keep interrupting my personal life, that only chance will be revoked. Which means... You would never have a chance to get a penny from me. That's all. Live long, Mom. After that day, we all went our separate ways. My mom and Beverly didn't send me any more messages. Beverly continued to run her own store. But she couldn't manage to upgrade her business. As a result, her competitors in the area quickly outpaced her, and her business started to decline. She divorced her husband because they couldn't have children due to her being barren. Two years later, my mom tragically died in a car accident. It happened so suddenly that it was hard to believe. Despite our complicated relationship, she was still my mother. I attended her funeral in silence and left a check for $10,000 to honor our agreement. I know it might sound harsh, but the emotional wounds she left in my heart were deep and forgiveness would take time. The silver lining in all of this is that I'm now living a fulfilling life with a happy family and a successful career. Dealing with childhood trauma is never easy. But with the support of good people around you, you can overcome it. Remember, everything will be okay if you keep believing in the goodness of those in your life. Good luck!